Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently down 5.02% to 43865. Ethereum down 6.47% to 3576. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. When people look at this market, they can look at it in one of two ways. They either look with panic or they look with opportunity and delight. Professional investors and traders look at this as an absolute fantastic day to get in. The smart money mindset is actually the rewiring of the brain to look at red as a buy and to look at green as risk on. It's really hard to make this transition, but it's what all professionals do. On days like today, many people feel an absolute terror. That's why I created this conceptual architecture, the KS Zone Analysis, the four stages that all investors and traders progress through to become consistently profitable and attain real wealth. On days like today, Zone 1 and Zone 2, which relate to certainty, there's a lot of panic and a lot of aggression in the market. It's really important to note that these are natural phases and all professionals go through this as well. It's nothing new to be in these zones. Zone one, the panic zone is all about sleepless nights and looking at your particular cryptos and saying, please, please, please go up, please go up. That is zone one. Zone two is the blame zone. When cryptos don't go up or they go down like today, a lot of people can get angry and that's really understandable and it's normal when people are caught up in the idea of certainty that is the problem it's just certainty that's the problem when people progress to zone three they've had that certainty burnt out of them basically they understand that markets are probabilistic by nature there literally is no certainty but there is probability and we learn probabilistic fearlessness, patience, and have a lot of rules. Sometimes we place buy orders in the market and they can take literally weeks to fill, but this is okay. There's enormous amounts of patience in zone three and instant gratification that occurs in zone one and zone two is a thing of the past. Zone three is all about understanding that volatility is your friend and having money put aside for days like today to buy the red. Zone three is all about consistent profitability, but consistent profitability without meaning is very valueless. That's why we talk about real wealth and gaining meaning in life, as well as a positive excellence life trend. If you're looking at the red today and you're doing what is called the light switch effect, that can point to the fact that you're still in zones one or zones two. And remember, this is totally normal. Every single professional goes through this process. They literally get burnt and reforged by fire. The light switch effect is because in zone one and zone two, people think that there is certainty they can make money without risk. That is never the case. And scammers prey on people inside these zones. They promise great returns with 0% loss. It's an absolute fantasy. And if you see anyone like that, run. The rewiring of the mind to turn away from being a light switch going in, all in and all out, is not easy to do. To give up the concept of wanting 100% certainty, to be always having perfect timing, it's just the certainty trap in operation. This plays out across all financial markets, but especially crypto is incredibly volatile. Because of that volatile nature, we must think differently. Zones three and zones four have a very, very different perspective. They get excited when the prices go red and the redder the better. Zone three and zone four see a market like today and actually get excited 
they get excited to place orders it's a really interesting thing and only on days like today people can really feel the difference where zones one and zones two understandably they're addicted to certainty being correct capturing everything they don't want to miss out on any opportunity if something went green and did well they think that they should have been in it they think that they should have had some magical power or it was because in zone two that somebody just didn't tell them that's not how professional traders and investors think they think from probabilistic fearlessness they know the overall structure of the market because they take a lot of time to understand it they actually lean into positions they don't go all in they lean in leaning in just means buying at support levels below the current price and that can be buying at support levels up to 30 percent below the current price it's a completely different way of thinking but it turns days like today where we see a bath of red into something really really exciting not the opposite it's not terrifying at all it's actually what we look for i can hear you say ken you you sound crazy why would you want to lean into a red market that just sounds bananas and that sounds fair but think about it like this when we look across the fear and greed index all of these times when there was a lot of extreme fear that was the single best time to dollar cost average in as an investor as a trader even more so to gain a little bit of perspective let's look at the ks model which is a crypto technical trading model based on institutional price psychology we look at the institutional mindset there's a very big difference between institutional or smart money thinking and retail thinking very very different with institutional smart money thinking we look at black swan events as really really exciting times to get in or add to positions i'll just zoom in here to this particular price action that was a black swan event where we saw the price of bitcoin this is the price of bitcoin actually reduced by 63.34 percent now when we have a 10 5 10 fund we know that a thing that starts at 10 but goes down to 5 that's a 50 percent decrease but if i'm being conceptual here but if it goes from 5 back up to 10 that is a hundred percent increase when we get these really really big sell-offs they do have a boundary that they touch and i put that into this ks model the masterclass students do have this model and this indicator when we see this big fall off 63.34 percent the actual coming back not even to that point just to this point is a 161.66 percent increase this is exactly why prices are negatively biased and it's exactly why professional traders and investors lean in especially on big capitulation moves down this requires a lot of rewiring of the brain and unfortunately very very few people tell you this secret and it is a secret they guard very very tightly because they want to make money from it just think about it like this if you manage to buy down around here and it's very very difficult to time any tops or any bottoms but just say you did and you said okay i'm seeing this price come down from here to here and then within the span of six days it actually increased 85.43 percent just please bear these things in mind sharp angles reverse now you can see what the purpose of this red line is this red line is designed to catch bitcoin's price one more thing this was a complete shutdown of the entire world and the u.s liquidity crisis it was pretty big stuff and this red line caught bitcoin's price okay we just zoomed in in that particular area you can see just how powerful volatility is let's zoom into this particular area current price action on days like today you'll see a lot of people talking about the demise of bitcoin going to zero 
Let me just adjust this chart so you can see it more clearly. That's a bit better. I always like to give you a really, really good view of the price action. What you can see here is just a pattern that's played out so many times before. When we had this big sell down, we had price action move a little bit lower than that particular tail. We've always had that as the bottom of our red zone. And that's actually happened many, many times before. We've been ready for that for the whole process from this sell off basically 56 days ago. These kind of patterns tend to play out in the crypto market time and time again. We see extreme volatility, an attempt to get above, and sometimes they do get above. It was looking quite good there for a while, but we always have to be aware of smart money interest. They certainly want to come down and push the price down as much as they can. We'll probably get, if we do manage to do that, we'll probably get some kind of long tail rejection like this, and we would expect the price to rally up. This catches a lot of people off guard. When we see resistances cross, we can get very, very explosive movements. Why do they occur? That's because the shorts need the confidence to come back into the market. It's been really light on in terms of shorting behavior at present. So we really need to attract the shorts into the market because they create these legs up. If you're shorting, please be careful. I would always argue that everybody in the crypto market should just do spot. Spot prices can move around by very substantial percentages month on month. There is really no need to leverage. Of course, you don't own whatever you buy under leverage and you have to pay fees all the time. That's not the way to go. On days like today, we can see a lot of people have been hurt by leverage. We can see that there's been $470.09 million liquidations in the past 24 hours, occurring across 134,826 traders. This is money that's been lost under leverage. Those people probably couldn't afford to lose that money. I don't think anybody can afford to lose any money at any stage. But with liquidations, people try with leverage. People try to magnify the amount of money that they have, thinking that they can really, really do well. The crypto market is so incredibly volatile. If you're not a seasoned professional, and even if you are, I would still recommend going under spot in the crypto market. It has its own leverage. Let's have a look a little bit further. 24 hour liquidations, around 87% were long. And we can see the liquidations, the long liquidations starting to accrue. This is going to cause certainty to the shorts and the shorts will want to come in. And it's played out time and time and time again. It's almost like a matrix film. Turning to Bitcoin's price, we can see Bitcoin currently trading at 43,415. We have literally entered the red zone now, but what we see is a very, very committed candle, a very long body. What is that about? These are institutional candles. You can see institutional candles play out from time to time. What also happens with institutional candles? S sharp angles reflect, they reverse. Just be aware that if you're wanting to sell out, we could very well get a reflection into the upwards direction. Please also bear in mind that based on past previous price action, we could go as low as 37,406. If we do, we do. These are not things to worry about. They're really things to just be prepared for. That's why we always say, every episode make in advance probabilistic choices what will you do if bitcoin sinks to 43 and you know the gravity of bitcoin will take the crypto market with it and those particular alts that you hold could bleed more severely than bitcoin what will you do this is a really really important question to have an answer to every time you look at your crypto what will you do if it goes up? And it goes up really well. Of course, that's fantastic. And that's what we want. But what will you do? There's a lot of trade management involved in that as well. 
What will you do if it goes sideways and gets really boring? Personally, I see this as nothing more than regular price action in the crypto space. I've been leaning into positions and I certainly look at this very, very favorably. The concept of leaning in is that you basically layer buy. You're not just buying everything at market. Professionals look at their investments like stock in a shop. For example, if you were stocking a crypto shop, you certainly wouldn't go out and buy at expensive prices. You would want a discount because you're going to on sell. You would look into the market on days like today and say, wow, I get percentages off here. This is fantastic. I, I can stock up my shop. And you'll have many different types of investments from all over the place. You'll have some top shelf investments and some ones you want to put on the discount table to get rid of. But whatever it is, you have a strategy and that's really, really important. Always approach the crypto market with a strategy. The first strategy should be to understand exactly what you're investing or trading in. Bitcoin and the cryptographic alts, the crypto ecosystem, they're all about the next level of the internet. Back in 1993, I actually had an internet service provider. I owned and operated one. I supplied major companies with their internet connection. What I found back in 1993, this is before Netscape came out, and we had very, very slow modems, you know, the ding, ding, dang song that they used to play. The concept is that many people thought that the internet was just a passing fad, and these people were not unintelligent. They were professors at university. They were smart people, but they just didn't understand discontinuous innovation. They used all their present economic modeling techniques and they thought this digital stuff doesn't have any tangible value. It's all intangible, therefore it's not worth anything. And they were absolutely wrong, as we know. What the Bitcoin and the alts actually represents is the next level of the Internet's evolution to Web 3.0. This is really, really important. What happened, and I know from practice because I, I paid the bills for an internet service provider and they weren't small. The concept is when people have internet, they, the particular website requires a mass of storage and masses, farms of computers, just they're everywhere, servers are everywhere. And they are very, very expensive because of the incredible expense people needed to centralize. So when you look at Google and Facebook, well, Meta, then you understand even Amazon, it doesn't matter what internet company you look at, they have huge infrastructure demands. And that means they need to raise a lot of capital because they're very, very expensive to fund. What actually Bitcoin and the alts represents is the ownership layer of decentralization. That's where millions and millions of people can share the cost and become realistically owners of the next Amazon and the next Meta or Facebook or the next Twitter. And they are actually paying for the infrastructure. The infrastructure costs are getting spread over millions and millions and millions of people. That is what cryptos represent. The value of the crypto market is actually driven by actual adoption of technology. When we compare the adoption of Web 3.0, which is just crypto, to the adoption of Web 2.0, which is the internet, we can see Web 3.0 adoption is growing far, far more quickly than the internet ever did. Billionaires like Jeff Bezos were made during this internet gold rush. And it's going to happen with crypto. There will be very many, well, there'll be a lot of billionaires minted from crypto. But this is basically discontinuous innovation. It's not a, a small step incremental improvement. It's invention. And that is hard for a lot of people to look at because they don't have a base of reference. I've left the link to this particular article I wrote on Medium 
why Bitcoin is misunderstood by experts and why do experts regularly fail to predict the future? They do it all the time. Incredibly brilliant people in one economic era can't comprehend what the value is of the next economic era. They do it all the time and they should know better, but actually they don't. And if you read this particular article, you will get a fantastic idea of how flight was actually rejected by some very, very senior people. And it's happening with crypto again. And it happened with the internet as well. Many people, as you saw, thought the, the internet was just a passing fad and it wouldn't change anything. We know better and we know that crypto will absolutely change the world. That's why it's really important to know what you're investing in and to make sure that it's really rock solid. Of course, Bitcoin is the undeniable rock solid foundation of the crypto sphere, but some of these other alts are very good too, but they do tend to cycle around a bit. Some things like, for example, Ethereum Classic, which is this little sliver, and Bitcoin Cash, which is this little sliver, they kind of don't do so well over time. Just bear that in mind. When we look at chaos zone analysis, the key thing to do is to get out of zone one and zone two as quickly as you humanly can. The stress is not good for you and it really ruins quality of life. Moving into probabilistic fearlessness, knowledge and forgiveness. The forgiveness is all about self-forgiveness. It's not about forgiveness for other people. It's about forgiving yourself for thinking that it's possible to have certainty in a crazy market like crypto. Crypto is incredibly volatile by nature, but when you know how to apply the rules, how to have the patience, it's a game changer. Everything will turn around. You will see that people touting certainty, promoting certainty, saying you can get X percent return guaranteed. You know, they're just liars. Anybody that says that, anybody that claims there is certainty in the crypto space is not doing the right thing at all. They are just trying to capture zone one and zone two people. And that's just not right. Everything is about zone three. But of course, when you get to a position where you're actually making money from crypto and doing well, the question is, okay, so what? Are you happy? And that's why we have zone four. Zone four is incredibly important. It's incredibly important to have meaning in this world. And that's why we always talk about real wealth. In truth, money without meaning is simply another form of poverty. And we're not in the crypto space to experience any shape of poverty. You can see on days like today, how important rule 774 is. Master yourself to master the market. Self-mastery is very, very difficult because it means that we must control our emotional state just like a professional. For example, if you need to go into really very, very risky surgery and your surgeon was highly emotional, would you want them to operate on you? The truth is no, you need someone who is emotionally detached, but of course has emotions still, but just knows when to turn them on and turn them off. That's why we focus on real wealth and maintaining a positive excellence life trend. As a community, we have a focus on inner and outer peace, integrity, decency, kindness, fulfillment and meaning, empathy and love, health, courage and honor, fearlessness, as well as money. Money is simply a means to an end. It is never an end within itself. If it is, people are going down a non-positive excellence life trend. Money is never an end in itself. Just like cryptos, we all experience pullbacks in life and they can be rather severe. If you're going through a life pullback, please understand that our love and healing thoughts are with you as a community. We wish you all the best. You're not alone. The sun will come out again and there's always hope. This is really, really important to understand. Life goes up and down. It moves in a wave just like crypto does. 
You can look at the crypto market and say it's all red. And sometimes that's what life feels like too, but it does pass and the sun will come out again. Just keep faith, keep hope and keep on focusing on being the best you that you can be and being loving and kind to those around you. It will make all the difference. On days like today, you'll see no shortage of news headlines saying that they know exactly why what happened has happened. Please know that they have no idea whatsoever. News headlines are sensationalistic and people, reporters, grasp at straws. And there's no shortage of bad news to go around. So there's plenty of things to point the finger at. For example, we could point it at Omicron nearly 490,000 confirmed cases. We could point it at other variants if we wanted to and just say, okay, this is the reason why, but it's not the reason why. It's just a reason. Around the world, there's 297.8 million C19 cases. We can see the daily new cases have been spiking. Fortunately, the death rate has not. That is fantastic, but we can see the number of new cases is really, really high. Over 2.2 million new cases overnight. With so many C19 and Omicron cases, we would expect the transport indexes to be hit. What is actually happening? At the moment, TradingView has decided to represent the XAL like this. Masterclass students, you will have this particular chart when you get up to that area. What we can see is that the transport indexes have actually bounced. They did come down around the 2nd of December, around the 1st, and then they bounced like a Super Bowl right up. If this is correct, and we understand the basic pattern of the XAL because we look at it every day, there's actually an improvement in the airlines. This is actually pointing to reopening. We can see from the chart, there's no real major issue here. Looking at inflation versus Bitcoin, Masterclass students, you will also have this chart. When you're up to it, it will be presented. We can see that the five year and 10 year break even inflation rate are on the rise. What does this mean? It means basically that people are anticipating economically that inflation will increase. That should mean that Bitcoin will turn around. We can see that the five year and 10 year are very representative of Bitcoin's price action. We have a divergence at the moment. I'm just using it to lean in personally. This is a really, really positive thing for Bitcoin and crypto. A lot of people are worried about Evergrande and for good reason as well. There's over $1 trillion worth of net debt in the Chinese property market. And what we see here is the property developers in China have been severely hit in price. Evergrande is basically the particular company that people look at, but you can see all the other majors have been suffering. But what do we see here? We can see a turning around, a bottoming out of prices with Vanki and Country Garden. Masterclass students, you will also have this chart when it's appropriate. You just see it in the lesson description. Let me just go in here and let's have a look at current price. Just as we saw yesterday, the Chinese property market is actually turning around. We also need to understand the interplay between stocks and bonds and crypto. When bond prices go up and everything is from a crypto perspective, not a stock market perspective, we don't look at the stock market from a stock market perspective. We look at it from a crypto perspective, which is slightly different. We can see bonds and $128 trillion worth of money going into bonds as of August 2020. So that's quite a while ago. And there's been a lot of money printing since then. The global stock markets around that same time, November 2020, were worth $95 trillion. There's a lot of people that say that crypto cannot increase in market cap. There's two problems with that. One is people like that probably looking at it from a retail perspective, not an institutional perspective. Actually, the derivative market has a high end value of $1,000 trillion. If we just get a fraction of that going into the crypto space, crypto will explode. 
Okay, let's get a bit of a sentiment indicator. We can see the VIX, the volatility or fear gauge of the stock market. It's had a slight tick up, but it's certainly not shooting to the moon in any way, shape or form. NASDAQ 100 is coming back to test its support line. Oil is coming up, which would be driving inflation. Bond prices are coming down. Yields are coming up. This is really, really good for crypto. I'm not saying it's good for the stock market. Gold futures, we can see the gold price making its way up slowly. And we can see the US dollar currency index, the DXY, also seeking to retest a previous support level. In fact, same day, different date, basically. Let's have a quick look through the crypto market. We can see Bitcoin, as we know, it's sliced through that particular support level and it's going down. But we have a pretty good understanding of what could potentially and probabilistically play out. We can see Ethereum has hit that previous level that we put in. That 3480 level. It's really interesting. When we talk about leaning in, we always lean in with the concept that price is negatively biased. That's a real lifesaver in crypto. And also layering in, putting your buys, limit order buys at different levels of support. We can see Binance Coin has actually grabbed that 468.90 buy level. And we can see Sol has reached its support and that buy level of 154.41. When we look at ADA, it's still above the 1088 level. XRP is nearly at the point of well, 7069 level. And we can see DOT just hovering around. When we look at Luna, it's come back to the 7778 level that looks so far away before when price looked to be just exponentially taking off. Whenever you're placing your buy orders, please remember price is negatively biased and you want to capture long tail rejections as many as possible. The reason we have these blue lines on the charts, this is Bitcoin's fingerprint. Bitcoin's fingerprint will give us the directional bias or the directional gravitational pull on any specific crypto. It's really important to look at. We can see Doge coming back and just being pushed by Bitcoin's gravity, as is SHIB. When you, like I was saying before, when you lean in, please lean in at lower levels of support. It can be really hard. For example, when something is going up, you just think that you're going to miss out. Let's look at Matic, for example. You would say up here, we're going to miss out. We're going to miss out. It's never going to come back to two, 250. It just won't. It's just going to the moon. But we stick by our guns. We, are, we have probabilistic fearlessness and we don't care if we miss out. We look at it and say, there is a probability that we'll get a wave down here, a retouch of support and a bounce. And we always look for that. So we're not like these crazy people with their mouths open saying bye, bye, bye and ridiculous targets and all of those sort of things. We're very, very realistic. You want to guard your profitability as much as possible. That is a cornerstone of being a professional. We can see AVAX came back to retest support. SHIB under resistance at the moment but we know bitcoin's gravity and it's going to do that to every single alt that's fine litecoin just collapsed below that previous support let's have a look at uni uni was doing really really well yesterday and has lost all its gains and some algo same thing and Chainlink did a really big beautiful spike up and it's decided to take a bit of a breather and come down we can see Bitcoin Cash is still weak. Tron is still weak. Decentraland has actually come and slurped up a couple of these buy levels. Looking quite good. Axie Infinity has done the same. This is what we call leaning in. And you can always increase your buy levels. For example, if price moves the other way, you can just grab the price levels, the lower ones, and raise them up. No problem at all doing that. Stellar is still under resistance. VET the same. We were talking yesterday about potential price moves in Atom. 
let's have a look. You can see what has actually happened with Adam. It, over that last particular period, I think it was around 41, had actually come down to 34. Many people thought that Adam Cosmos was just taking off and it would never come back. We look at this support line and say there's a large probability, probability that we will hit support. And we talked yesterday about the up and down movement in terms of volatility. I hope that helps out. This is how things play out in the crypto market. It takes a lot of patience, I know, but it's very important to guard your position. FTT token, we can see it coming back into a level of consolidation, just a lower level. EGLD has broken below its consolidation level, and we know it's just being influenced by Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin turns around, EGLD will also. You remember ICP yesterday. ICP was bolting up. People were thinking, I've missed out, I've missed out. I need to get in. It's going to the moon. It hit resistance and what it did too, it shot back. And this is what we always say. These resistances, these resistance levels are really, really important to draw. If you're not in the crypto market and you do not know how to draw these support and resistance lines, you will basically get slaughtered at some stage. It is so incredibly important to be able to draw support and resistance lines. Please have a look into it if you don't know how to do it. Let's have a look at Filecoin under resistance. We can see sand has broken through its support level and it's coming down to a secondary support. Let's have a look at HBAR. HBAR is just doing what Bitcoin's gravitational pull is doing to it. That's why we spend so much time looking at Bitcoin. In days like today, you really, really get why Bitcoin is critical to look at. For example, if HBAR was your beloved alt and you only had eyes for HBAR, well, that's, that's very nice. What you would see is that you may miss what is happening in Bitcoin. To understand what is happening in your alts, you must understand Bitcoin. If you don't, you'll get slammed and you will get shaken out of many positions that you should be actually entering into. Let's have a look at Theta just below its once support turn to resistance line and we understand because when bitcoin's gravity turns around it will pull everything with it ethereum classic like bitcoin cash looking really really weak a once fantastic project but this is the way of the crypto market let's have a look at our favorite near is always going far what do you see in here there was a support level in here we could clone this and bring this up in fact i'll do that so we just hold control and just drag it up. What we see here is that hit, it came back to its support and now it's bounced. This is why it's really important to know your support levels as well. You cannot effectively invest if you don't know how to trade. And I know that sounds a bit crazy because you would say, hang on, I'm an investor. I don't care where I buy. I'll just, for example, with near, I'll just buy right at this peak, 17,884, and everything will be fine. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you want to buy down here at, say, 9 or $10? That's a really, really big difference to your profitability. And this is a thing that a lot of investors, they don't pay attention to it. Where you buy makes your profit. The one important thing that we know, crypto is not going away. Bitcoin is not going to zero. We understand that the centralization of internet services is just one step on the path to decentralization. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. And we know that the alts build out on Bitcoin's cryptographic ecosystem. So what do we see with VRA? VRA is simply following Bitcoin's fingerprint. That's as simple as it gets. It's direct, directly influenced by that gravity. What happens when Bitcoin starts to liquidate shorts and starts to get a massive amount of buying? It will shoot up and it will liquidate shorts in the process. We'll push it exponentially up. This is the way on all of these cryptos. It doesn't matter what you look at. Icon, IOTA, CRV, COMP. RLC, RLC, Audio, Cartesi, 
Bitcoin's directional movement is the gravity of the crypto market. Days like today bring it out. That's why I'm going into a little bit more depth with you to help you to understand this. We can see ICON obeying Bitcoin's gravity. One thing to take a note of, when we have a very powerful crypto like CRV, this is really, really attractive crypto. It's a pretty crypto. We can see that its support line is being held. This is really good. We want to focus on things that have cryptos that have this potential from a trading perspective. They look really good. And you can, of course, have your investment bag and you can do your cuddling of your beloved alts. But in your trading bag, it's very different. You're actually looking for specific patterns to play out and trying to get in early on those. That will give you more money to put into your beloved alts. That's a good thing. Let's have a look at IOTA. Just coming back to a lower level of support, doing nothing other than normal price action. Comp retesting its support line. We can see RLC is under resistance, but just coming back to a level of support anyway. Audio coming back to a level of support and Cartesi, Cartesi breaking below a level of support. But this is nothing new for Cartesi. Cartesi just has fun. It's spiking all over the place, just normally. Yesterday, we had the community discuss pullbacks reveal destiny and what incredible comments we got. Thank you, Shane, for yours. We can all get stuck in a rut. And having a new direction and purpose at a time of chaos, that's what pullbacks give you. And thanks for restoring my faith in knowing that there are good, unselfish, beautiful people still out there. Thank you, Shane. Our community is just incredible. We have so many wonderful, wonderful people and you can interact with them every single day. They're just beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Crypto Monkey. Learning an incredible amount and enjoying it thoroughly. In the masterclass. I also want to reach out to Cindy and Rocky. They're currently in isolation for COVID. Our thoughts and prayers are with you both. And despite their pullback, they've immersed themselves into learning. And that's a fantastic thing to do. Although I imagine it could be quite difficult if you're going through a nasty cough and a fever and all that goes with COVID. I just want to let you know that the sun will come out again. You'll get stronger and stronger and stronger. And the community's love and thoughts, healing thoughts are with you as they are with other people going through life pullbacks at the moment. And welcome, Rocky. It's really nice to have you here. I also wanted to thank Badger for his very nice words and very insightful comment. He feels that at times life is like one big never ending pullback one step forwards, two step back. It, it can happen, absolutely. And it can be very discouraging. But Badger sees it as the starting point. Hardships as hidden blessings. And this I love. Lessons learned are life gems that could not otherwise be acquired. Whoa, fantastic Badger. They give you insight, empathy, patience, strength and experience that will help others. Gold must be tried in the fire to take out all the impurities. What a beautiful, beautiful thing to say. Thanks so much, Badger, for sharing. I just want to let the Masterclass students know that I'm actively working with developers to release the new platform so that we can all hang out together and share ideas. Just a quick update. I want to reach out and just give a very special thank you to Joel Joel shared some really insightful things. Joel had a troubled upbringing and as a result, he sought to blame, but that resulted in a lot of personal growth. Blame is very, very natural. We all seek to blame. If something doesn't go right for us, it's just a normal reaction. But of course, Joel's moved through that and he's found that forgiveness is the way forward. This is absolutely beautiful. And that is the key to inner peace. When we just don't forgive, we anchor ourselves in a really unpleasant situation. And Joel's adopting the real wealth mindset as best he can. And I'm sure he's doing a fantastic job of it. I see it. I read every single comment. 
And it's really beautiful that Joel is saying that he's seeking on focusing how he can most profoundly, positively affect the world and those I love as best I can while I can. Joel, you're an absolute legend. This is actually a really good one to talk about today. Glennis, you predicted the market going forward. I found Canon stop freaking out when everything drops because crypto moves in waves. And Glennis is just patiently waiting. Good on you, Glennis. And Beardy saying pullbacks lead to our ultimate destiny is just beautiful. Flamingo, always very insightful and very wise. Flamingo says, reminds me that there are so many kind and caring people out there. And there are. It's really hard to go through life sometimes. You can feel like the world could be against you. You keep on butting up against people that don't care. But we have an incredibly caring community and a very loving and kind one. And Flamingo talks about pullbacks being a catalyst to making our lives better. Flamingo always wishes everyone real wealth. And I find that so beautiful. I use that sometimes, that quote, wishing everyone real wealth in honor of Flamingo. It's just such a beautiful thing to say. Thank you, Flamingo. And Cheryl, speaking about everything gets you stronger for the next hurdle. This particular one, this particular quote is for honoring Joel and his comments, really beautiful comments. Forgiveness releases past pain. Forgiveness is often a really, really difficult thing to do. Of course, when we're hurt, the last thing we want to do is to forgive the people that have hurt us. But forgiveness is not about other people. It's about us some, simply just tying a bow on the past and leaving it there and moving forward with our life and saying basically it couldn't have been any different and that's created some degree of uniqueness inside me and that uniqueness will come out and benefit others at some later point. If you would like to talk about forgiveness in the comments, I would really love to hear what you say. It's not an easy thing to do. In fact, it can be one of the hardest things to do, especially when the hurt and the pain is very, very deep. We all understand that. All people that go through life for any period of time understand that pain is pretty natural and forgiveness is really difficult. If you'd like to discuss that idea, forgiveness, maybe how hard it is, or the things that you have found forgiveness for, anything you would like to share. I think it's really beautiful. And forgiveness in the sense of when you're in the crypto market and you can't time the perfect bottom and you can't time the perfect top and you don't know the future and you can't pick the numbers for the next lottery draw, forgiveness for that is also really, really important because nobody can do it. You can only go from probability. I would love to hear what you think. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. Please say hi and let me know if you have any questions. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.